In Sims, I can control my physical appearance to the most minute detail. From glasses, to a mohawk, to a size 20 cis waistline, to a sweet pair of pumas, I can make an avatar that is frighteningly close replica of myself or how I wish I appeared to others. Even in GTA San Andreas, I can get hood-worthy haircuts or develop prison packs in order to intimidate rivals. Is that the secret of these games? Do we love the control that we have over our environment? A control that mimics our everyday life but also bleeds into those areas that we cannot, such as our facial structure? Make yourself comfortable, son. I'm still on top of my game. I think Beverly would have approved. Do I secretly wish I could run around in a bathing suit top and go-go boots because my sim certainly seems to be scurrying a lot of relationship points with that bachelor in Middleburg? As we strive after the American Dream version 2, what could be a better interpretation of Gatsby's green light than a naked blonde in a hot tub? And you wouldn't be an American advertiser if you didn't know that sex sells. Even more so than the streetwalkers in Grand Theft Auto, The Sims promote sexual access as a mark of success. Consumerism is the driving force of The Sims gameplay. You complete missions to be able to buy different decorations for your home. Or with the money earned from respect missions, I can spurt some killer threads or move up from the dollar menu at Mickey D's. Just like currency is the driving force of the real world, the almighty dollar retains a ubiquitous presence in the upper right hand corner of both game screens. However, this is America, and money is not just given to you. These games are updating the American dream, not demolishing it. In both games, your character has to learn skills in order to make dough. From learning to jump fences, to shooting guns, to cooking for mom, the game's interface doesn't just let you slide by on welfare. Shit, I'm the best there ever was! Yeah, that's real Grove Street style now! How you doing on the Fetty? I'm kind of short, you know. Crash took all my paper, man. Left me with nothing but small change. Hey, get yourself a beer or something. I'll catch up with you. However, both games are also filled with mind-numbingly mundane tasks. How do we explain the pleasure gained from ordinary tasks that we could easily complete in our own realities? Whether I have to eat pizza in GTA or take a bath in The Sims, we continue to sit riveted in front of the screen. I'm gonna get us something to eat. I'm gonna finish this, then I'm gonna take care of business. Come on, just pick something. With the viral popularity of even more intricate games, such as World of Warcraft and Second Life, how do we as media consumers and creators explain the addiction to a virtual world that closely examines our own reality? And yes, I may not spend my evening curb stopping the fuzz or setting up mini bars, but this aberration from our normal reality cannot completely explain the allure of these games. There is nothing glamorous about eating at Burger King or cleaning the toilet. Is this obsession with appearance, sets, and collecting kitsch a side effect of our exposure to the media? Or is the media merely reacting to a changing set of American values? 
But maybe we are even approaching the question in an outdated fashion. Maybe the delineations are not so clear between us and them. Because in Sims and Grand Theft Auto, we have an astounding amount of control over our characters and their environment. In these games, we are the media. Thank you.